We're going to start with our American Made uh, program video for the people in the room. This is not on the Zoom yet. As soon as this is over, we're going to jump right into the, uh, the webinar and we're going to be recording it. I uh, don't know how many people are on it, but we had more than 400 registrants. So we're hoping to have several hundred people join us today virtually. Um, so we'll start the video and then we'll dive into the programming. So this is a revolution. And so is this and this and this and this. Okay, you get it. We've always been a country of revolutionaries. At American Made, we're building an innovation engine to supercharge a revolution of bold ideas. We're building a team of the nation's most passionate innovators, creators, challengers. You, her, him, they, them, us. We need people who think inside the box, outside the box, deconstruct the box, or simply realize there is no box. American Made is a network that fosters ideas, brings people from all backgrounds together, creates space for change, and opportunities where everyone can thrive. We need millions of impact makers like you. We empower change makers. We empower you to lead the clean energy revolution through training, connections, teaming, mentoring, and prize challenges. You can start a revolution. This is your defining moment. This is your fast track to the clean energy economy. Bring your voice, your ideas, your background, your roots, your revolution. Build with us. Be revolutionary. Great. Are we on? All right. Wonderful. All right, wonderful. Happy Earth Day and Earth Week. And welcome to the second American Made Earth Day celebration. We're celebrating um, amazing people who are working on this wonderful program to supercharge the clean energy revolution. And I want to welcome you all here today. Uh, we are so, uh, I, I just want to say thank you for joining us. I'm Debbie Brout Giles, uh, the program manager for the American Made program. And I want to thank members of our program, prizes, the network, specifically our competitors and our innovators, our industry members, our partners and stakeholders. And thank you so much for joining. In honor of Earth Day, as well as our fifth year working with the US Department of Energy on this wonderful prize to accelerate innovation, entrepreneurship um, through this program, I'm pleased to see that there's numerous friendly faces in the room joining in person and virtually. I'm also really pleased to announce that we have several special guest speakers with us today. Ali Zaidi, Assistant to the President and the National Climate Advisor will be joining us today. Alejandro Moreno, the Acting Assistant Secretary for Energy Efficiency and Renewable Energy. Dr. Martin Keller, the Director for the National Renewable Energy Laboratory. They're with me to help kick off this wonderful event to showcase 10 different DOE prize launches uh, DOE offices, and we're going to be talking about prize launches, open opportunities, and winners to celebrate. We'll also hear some success stories from previous prize winners, and so you're going to love hearing from those folks as well. It's hard to believe, but five years ago, we set off with an invitation to anyone with a big idea. Anyone can come and compete in our very first prize challenge. And then we had big ideas of our own. We had a dream of doing something even bigger um, and to develop a larger program to involve all of you. So we launched our first prize, never dreaming how many more would follow or how, many, how much impact we actually could make and how many wonderful innovators, creators, challengers would come and answer that call and join the American Made program and the fast track to the clean energy revolution. So last year at our first Earth Day event, we celebrated more than $100 million in cash prizes and support 30 prizes and more than 250 network members. And today, the difference of one year, one of Earth's cycles around the sun, we are now celebrating with all of you $200 million in cash prizes and support across nearly 60 prizes with uh, 400 or more network members that are with us today to help support our competitors. 
So it's really amazing how what a difference one year can make. Uh, together, we are sparking a revolution of bold ideas. But before we celebrate these big successes, I would like to share some underpinnings of our program, just so you understand kind of where we've been and, and what this program is all about. So we like to call it the American Made Innovation Engine, and that includes prizes to incentivize and accelerate innovation, a network of experts and resources to make that, that innovation a reality, uh, vouchers that open the doors to our national laboratories, and then training and mentoring that supports our innovators along the way and provides an equ equitable support uh, for all. So you could say that's kind of what keeps our gears going. So prizes, so prizes make innovation easy, fast, and agile. They offer a relatively low barrier to entry for competitors, and they fast track product development through rapid innovation cycles. Did it stop? Okay. So they fast track. Um, so they fast track uh, an innovation through innovation cycles and connect op entrepreneurs to the private sector and to the DOE's national laboratory system. They get expertise, resources, and funds into the hands of people and innovators very, very quickly. And they're inspiring and supporting innovators with diverse backgrounds and giving them a broad range of support so they can all be successful. Our suite of prizes is also known as the American Made Challenges. And we've now completed or are actively working on 58 prizes. And we've funded more than 520 teams already. To date, these have involved deep collaboration with no fewer than 18 DOE offices and have included topics all over the board, such as solar, wind, geothermal, buildings, batteries, carbon management, manufacturing, utilities, students, communities, and more. So recently, we've also been launching a lot of prizes that are geared toward building robust coalitions and programs to accelerate clean energy deployment in communities across the country, including underserved, rural, and remote communities. Many of these face tough challenges and inequities that require creative solutions, and prizes can be a part of that. The American Made Network is a nationwide ecosystem of support for our innovators, entrepreneurs, and communities. It consists of diverse, wide-ranging talent um, of more than 400 participating organizations right now. We like to call them connectors, and they are connecting people to the resources, the tools that they need to be successful. We also have something called power connectors, and these are special um, members of our network that we contract with to help accept, um, um, advance the program and really um, make a real difference with our prize competitors and with our programming that we offer. Vouchers are another key element to our prize program, and that is all about uh, really getting access to our national labs. It's kind of opening the door to our national lab system so that our innovators can start working with the researchers and the technology experts at the national laboratories. Okay, these are the wonderful DOE technology offices that we are working with today. And I absolutely love this slide because it kind of shows that how new collaborations and innovations across the spectrum of offices and technologies um, are reaching all across DOE. And we're thrilled to be working with each and every one of you. All right, so now that you know what American Made, the American Made Engine is all about, um, I, and how these elements kind of work together, I'm very pleased to have Dr. Martin Keller uh, with us today. He's the director for the National Renewable Energy Laboratory, right where we are today, for the people that are live in person. Um, I really appreciate um, you joining us today, Dr. Keller, and thank you for, for being here and supporting this program. So, uh, happy Earth Day, and uh, thank you, Debbie. Uh, you've, you and your team have done an amazing, incredible work to really to establish all this in creating this, this amazing program across so many different offices. So, and as Debbie said, again, I'm, I'm Martin, I'm the director here at NREL. And some of you might know, so the second lab director here at the lab, Dennis Hayes, he played a key role in founding the Earth Day so more than 50 years ago. And that's why you, uh, when we, again, we call ourselves Enrellians, when you go around the Earth Day is a very important element for us because one of our lab directors was really part of, of creating this wonderful celebration. And the name Earth Day says a lot. 
It means that the challenges we face are global. The planet is an interconnected system where problems in one area can affect all of us. The flip side is that anything we do for the good of the Earth, no matter how specialized it is, has a positive impact on all of us. It's important to act, to get started, even with something very small, because it can quickly gain momentum and grow into much more, as we have seen here with the prices. From my perspective, it has been so cool to watch this program grow from one prize, as David said, to almost now 60 prizes, from one DOE office to so many offices you have seen on this list here. The American Made program demonstrates so clearly what we can accomplish when we work hard and work together. Maybe cooperation and collaboration aren't the first thing what comes to mind when you talk about government, but that's really what's happening here. It's a collaboration across so many different areas within the government, and I think that's something really worth celebrating. This program is uh, speeding the debut of new ideas and driving innovation within a cross technologies process and people. We've seen innovation in solar hardware, software, and permitting in solar desalination, in coastal desalination, in wind and water, in advanced manufacturing, lithium-ion battery recycling, micro-battery design, building materials, building decarbonization, in geothermal lithium ex extraction, and geophones, in utilities, cities, schools, communities, and underserved populations. Big brass of where this price really play a big role. What we have seen come from price teams has been cross-cutting, impactful, and inspiring. One thing I love about American Made is that it's also bringing people together in new ways, from the people supporting and leading the program prices, network, and vouchers, to those providing technical expertise and other support to competitors and beyond. In managing this program for, D for DOE, we've had new opportunities to collaborate with our partners in other national laboratories. So currently, there's eight national laboratories, including NREL, part of the American Made Network and Voucher Program. That's another sign. Sometimes people say, well, the labs are always competing and not collaborating. This is another example. Yes, the labs are really working together and collaborate. Eight labs really being part of this right now, and we're trying to expand this. We know it's important to bring together lots of people to get more innovation out into the world faster. We are getting uh, going to transition to a clean energy economy, and we all know time is ticking, so we have to get going. It's really important. As a national lab director, uh, it's uh, exciting to see us working with people we haven't traditionally worked with before, thanks to the American Made. We're working with new innovators and communities who have never interacted with government in this way, and certainly not with the National Laboratory. Some people say it's almost impossible to work with a National Lab, so it's complicated sometimes. Well, we know we also have lawyers. So, but that's again where this price has really helped to bring this barrier down, which is also so exciting to go and further accelerate these prices. Incredibly, the American Made Network has connected with an astonishing 400 plus organizations and partners who are helping our team advance and win. Among them are power connectors, network members who have special contracts with American Made and also substantial roles in the programs and team's success. There are 20 of these. Why is the National Lab doing this? We have access to all this expertise and can create connections back to other national labs. Throughout the lab's ex uh, existence, Andrew has always recognized that partnerships are critical to influence the marketplace and moving the needle. To maximize our impact, we must work with everyone, government, academia, and industry of all sizes. We at Enral, we always say we are here to really create a better planet, and we know that science is the first step, but then we need to build this partnership to get technology into the market, and the prices are really enabling this in a very new way. So the number of participants in, in prizes in America made is incredible, and we're inviting more partnerships. So talk to Debbie if you want to get involved. She is the person and the whole team. So reach out to us and to the whole team because there's so much we can do together. But now it's my special kind of pleasure to introduce Acting Assistant Secretary of Energy Efficiency and Renewable Energy, Alejandro Marino. Alejandro has been an excellent partner who has helped ensure that DOE, ARE, and NREL are working together. Alejandro is always driving us to collaborate, to bring teams together, to work together, to really accelerate the energy transition. So Alejandro, thank you for being here, and the floor is yours. Thank you.
Thank you, Martin. Um, I will say, I think if I had have one goal for my career in uh, federal service, it may well be to make this kind of innovation and collaboration that you see here the first thing people think of when they think of the federal government. So thank you. Um, and thank you to everybody who in the room and everybody listening um, through the webinar. I'm Alejandro Moreno. Um, I am, as, as Martin said, the Acting Assistant Secretary for the Department of Energy's Office of Energy Efficiency and Renewable Energy. For those not familiar with EERE, as we call it, um, it's effectively the one of the, the key clean energy um, innovation and technology centers within the federal government. Um, and what I really want to talk about I've, in, in the couple of minutes up here is why prizes like this are such a critical part of our portfolio. Um, we are a, about a $3 billion a year office and roughly about half of the research funding that, that, we, that, that we provide, we send out to private entities and, and universities, um, organized in, in three big pillars, um, renewable energy, mostly power, but not exclusively power, sustainable transportation and, and buildings and industry. Um, and most, most of our funding is, is organized by technology. We have our, our offices that are set by technology, vehicles, solar, wind, et cetera. But just as important is ensuring the health of the innovation ecosystem across the entire country, ensuring that innovators and entrepreneurs have access to increasingly greater funding streams, a clear path to commercialization, and real connection to the ultimate end users and consumers of the products for whom they're designing. Um, and prizes are a key incredibly valuable tool to do all of that. Um, and specifically, the American-made network and, and, and suite of prizes we found to be so, so effective. Um, why? Well, they're fast. You can usually have a six to nine month cycle in prizes, whereas our traditional larger funding opportunity announcements can, can take a couple of years from, from award to, to the end product. Um, or longer, they're agile, they can be structured in a wide variety of ways um, to meet different needs. You can have different types of phases, different types of, of mechanisms for entry. Um, you have a much lower barrier to entry, which allows us to reach new potential partners, new entrepreneurs, which is absolutely essential if we are going to maximize the potential of the country that we live in. Um, and they, you have a a gradual scale of commitment that allows us to, to really be able to understand how different organizations and different technologies function at, at progressively larger scales. And I think lastly, in, in a slightly different tack, but as important as any, is you have this built-in support network, this American-made network that, that you heard Debbie talking about, which provides this direct connection to other entrepreneurs and to potential uh, end users and customers. All of this is essential. So to me, it's really no surprise that prizes have taken off the way they have. They started in ERE, and now we have 18. Or, or Debbie, I, I was told earlier that, that this number may actually be 20 offices now um, in, in DOE using prizes. Um, and for those who are potentially interested in competing in a prize, know that almost no matter what technology you're interested in the Department of Energy, there's probably going to be an opportunity for you. We have 60 prizes that are in, in some phase of running or near completion. We have 13 that are open right now, including three new ones that you'll hear about today, one focused on the components for heliostats, um, one focused on manufacturing facilities and hubs, and one focused on deepening our relationships with HBCUs. Um, and we've allocated five and a half million dollars in prize funding just in this past month alone. Um, we know there's a potential for 40 million of funding in new funding available. Um, so if you're interested, take a look reach out to Debbie, come to the NREL website or to the ERE website, um, tell others who you think may be interested as well. Um, when I say that prizes work, I know I'm to the group listening today, I'm probably preaching to the choir, but not everybody knows that. Um, and certainly the more interest we get, the more applicants we get, the more successful they're gonna be, the more the technologies that we support through ERE and through NREL are going to work to the benefit of all Americans. Um, so I'm really excited to be here today. Thank you for having me. And I'm even more excited to see the technologies, the projects, the ideas that come out of these prizes grow, mature, and come to commercialization and be part of the, the clean energy transition that all of us are focused on. So thank you again. It is now my great pleasure to introduce um, the assistant to the president um, and the national climate advisor from the White House, uh, Ali Zaidi. Ali is serves as the, the assistant to the president and the National Climate Advisor. And in this role, he leads the White House Climate Policy Office, 
which coordinates policy development and President Biden's all of government approach to tackle the climate crisis, create good paying union jobs and advance environmental justice. Zaidi is a longtime advisor to President Biden, having provided counsel and leadership on climate policy development, legislation and executive action from day one of the administration and on the Biden presidential transition and campaign. Before his current role, he served as the deputy national climate advisor. Ali, it's my pleasure to welcome you to the floor. Thanks so much. Uh, and really wish I could be with all of you in person today. Um, we are at a transformative moment on climate, um, not just because the science um, really impresses upon us the urgency of taking action, not only because uh, more frequently we see in our communities the surging seas and their destructive potential, the wildfires raging with greater severity turning the sky uh, orange on certain days. Um, climate change is not uh, just a story of doom and despair. It's a story of a tremendous opportunity that's in front of us, um, not only to cut our emissions, but to lift up places that have been left behind, to pull in people that have been left out, and to get to the work of building projects that make a visible difference in cleaning up our communities and strengthening our economy. All of you uh, are part of that coalition uh, that will deliver the solutions that we need more than ever. Uh, we need not just deployment of the technologies uh, that have become understood, although we must deploy them with greater scale and greater speed, but also we need to continue the work of inventing the solutions that we're going to need to decarbonize the whole economy. Um, you know, a few decades ago, uh, maybe even as recently as a decade ago, the conversation around climate oftentimes was one about how we switch from dirtier power plants to cleaner ones, how we might one day go from vehicles that can only run on gasoline to vehicles that run on a hydrogen fuel cells or battery electric. Now we can set a much broader perspective on the table, a much broader view of what's possible in decarbonizing the economy. And it's not just talk. Uh, I think about the agriculture sector, where the Department of Agriculture now has 60,000 farms and ranches, 25 million acres worth of working land that's focused on producing climate smart agriculture. What are the things you can do to help us accelerate our progress in that space? Um, we've got in the transportation sector, not just a transformation taking place uh, in passenger vehicles, but heavy duty sector, the iconic yellow school bus going green, the postal service getting from point A to point B without putting pollution in the sky, airplanes uh, that will either run on sustainable aviation uh, or on the batteries of the future, more dense, lighter weight more durability and distance. Um, we're looking at marine, uh, where the wind blowing across the state of Texas is being transformed into fuels that can power ships uh, that can circle the globe. Um, when we look at our coastlines, we no longer just see a vector of risk when it comes to climate. We understand the potential of nature-based solutions to be sources that can absorb carbon and sequester them uh, when bolstered, can absorb the fury of the seas uh, and make us more resilient, can be the places where we plug in uh, to an offshore wind industry that we wouldn't have imagined um, uh, just a few decades ago. When we look at our buildings, uh, we no longer see an unmovable object. Uh, we see ways to get heating and cooling, uh, not through the combustion of fuels, but by plugging into a grid that can harness energy from the sun and the wind. We do all of these things um, because uh, we have the right folks at the table. And when it comes to the climate crisis, the right folks at the table means everybody. We've got a field, we've got to field the full team. Uh, folks uh, in labor and in industry, 
uh, from all backgrounds, uh, from all institutions of learning and research, uh, everyone's got to have the access to be able to make a difference in this moment because we need all of that talent at the table. The America Made program through its incentives, through the prizes, through the network, um, through the engagement with people like Martin, uh, who is a dear friend and a tremendous leader in this movement uh, to drive solutions into the marketplace. I'm so grateful uh, for all of you, for Alejandro, for the Department of Energy's leadership. Um, you know, I will will close out with this thought. Um, if just a few uh, years ago, uh, you would have told us that uh, we would have passed the largest climate bill in the history of this country and in the history of the world, um, that we would be tackling emissions in every sector of the economy, no longer viewing industry as hard to decarbonize, but actually as a place where we could forge clean steel and clean cement. Uh, we were chasing all forms of energy, solar, geothermal, hydropower, um, and overseeing an expansion of American energy that's unprecedented in scale and scope, that we were doing that in a way that brought minority serving institutions, historically black colleges and universities, bringing the talent pipeline from all across the country to this front line of fighting the climate crisis. I think there were a lot of people who would bet against that being what we would accomplish. Um, but folks, the good news is we are absolutely doing that in the face of the biggest challenge we've ever faced down. Um, a story that oftentimes is told to us as one of doom and despair, we've found within ourselves the ability to identify the hope and the possibilities and see the what the IPCC describes as a red light for humanity, as not a stop sign, but as a spur to get moving faster and faster. Grateful for all of your leadership, uh, whatever institutions you represent, wherever you come from, whatever your background, however it is that you're bringing your talent and your treasure and your time to this task. This is a moment that will define us for decades to come. Uh, so grateful that you're stepping up uh, and know that in the White House, in the Oval Office, you've got a president of the United States who's got your back, uh, who's got his uh, sleeves rolled up and is, wants to be your partner uh, in building a better America uh, and tackling the climate crisis. Happy Earth Day, uh, and uh, we'll see you around. Take care. Awesome. Thank you so much, Ali, for joining us today. Thank you, Alejandro. Thank you, Martin. It means so much to have you here to be supportive of this program. And I think what it shows is that it's not just important for NREL or our national labs or the Department of Energy, but it's also important for our nation, right? That we have a lot of tough challenges to tackle and we're here to do that through prizes and networks and teaming and support. So, now, very exciting. It's time to get into uh, the, the meat of the program so that we can hear from our DOE offices um, and hear from some recent prize winners as well, celebrate some team successes, um, et cetera. So the first speaker I'd like to introduce is Garrett Nielsen from the Solar Energy Technologies Office um, to talk about some of our solar prizes. So Garrett, are you with us? I am. Can you hear me? Awesome. We can hear you. Thank Great. you. Well, thank you, Debbie. Uh, it's great to be here on behalf of the Solar Energy Technologies Office celebrating Earth Day and the America Made program with all of you. Like Ollie mentioned, I, I wish I could have made it in person. It just, just didn't work this time, but I'm sure you're going to be having a great celebration all day. You know, as the office that first started at first that started the first American Made Challenge, it's just so exciting to see how far things have come, the number of other offices and technologies involved as well. I have a number of really exciting announcements, so I'll just dive right in. So Today, we are excited to announce the launch of our brand new American-made Heliostat prize. Heliostats are a critical cost driver for CSP systems, making up one-third to 50% of system costs. Next generation, lower cost Heliostats will play a critical role in increasing the competitiveness and deployment of CSP technologies in the future. This is a $3 million prize program intended to energize U.S. solar competitiveness and innovation by accelerating technology through the design, development, and demonstration phases 
for select components of a heliostat system to drive down their costs. Competitors can win up to $580,000 in cash across three phases over the next 18 months. The accelerated timeframe and challenges that escalate in complexity across the three phases will encourage quick innovation and quick prototyping to get us to serviceable prototypes that we can be testing rigorously in the field. In addition to creating new innovations that will help spread deployment of VideoStat technology, this competition will also create opportunities for participants from diverse backgrounds to break into solar and bring increased competition to the Heliostat industry. We anticipate applications from the, for the Heliostat prize to open on HeroX in May. And to learn more about the competition, I encourage you to go to HeroX where you can follow this prize for updates. We're going to our next announcement. In January of this year, we launched a brand new prize called the Community Power Accelerator Prize. This $10 million prize is designed to fast track the efforts of new, emerging, and expanding solar developers and co-developers to learn, participate, and grow their operations to support the development of portfolios of community solar projects that provide a variety of meaningful benefits to their local community. So keeping financial benefits in the communities where these systems are deployed. I'm excited to share that just last week, CEDO announced 25 phase one winners, each of whom earned $50,000 to progress their project development pipelines. These winners represent 16 states and have projects located in 29 states and territories. Phase one winners will work with local communities and beyond to develop their projects over the coming months. I really love to see this kind of geographic diversity It emphasizes that community solar is something that everyone can benefit from regardless of where they are, and regardless of whether their state has enabling legislative policy in place. It really shows the innovation in the businesses that are trying to deploy community solar. What's also very exciting is the third of the winners are businesses that are owned by women or individuals identifying as socially and economically disadvantaged. So it's really bringing community solar to more participants. And so speaking of geographic diversity, I'm excited to showcase another prize for those working on community solar projects right now. Last year, we ran the first ever Sunny Awards for Equitable Community Solar. This recently came to a successful conclusion with the announcement of the grand prize winners in 2020, 2022. This prize recognizes community solar projects and programs that employ and develop best practices to increase equitable solar access to the meaningful benefits that community solar can provide to their subscribers and their communities. Congratulations to all the teams that participated in the inaugural Sunnies. We're excited to share that the Sunny Awards are back for another round with $200,000 in prizes, double amount the previous year. And anyone interested in applying can learn more for our upcoming informational webinar, May 9th at noon Eastern. Registration is now open on HeroX with all submissions due by July 21st. And just to show how impactful and visible these projects are, just last week, the Secretary of Energy with members of the EPA and the White House held an event celebrating the Solar for All program from Washington, D.C., which was identified as one of the sunny winners in a very public and exciting event that we had here in Washington, D.C. Along beyond just kind of community solar, we're also continuing to push for technological innovation in other areas. The solar office is also supporting innovation in the emerging photovoltaics with $3 million perovskite startup prize, which focuses on the rapid development of solar cells and modules that use perovskite materials. Two weeks ago, members of the CEDO and NREL prize team attended the Materials Research Society spring meeting in San Francisco, where they were joined by four of the finalist teams. The four finalist teams presented on their technology and showcased their plan to bring it to market. At the end of the event, CEDO announced two more teams joining this list, American Perovskites and Perotech Energy. Congratulations to you both. These teams, along with the other finalists, are now competing for a $500,000 cash prize with $100,000 technical support voucher as they work towards demonstrating substantial progress and validation of their technologies, as well as developing a diverse network of mentors and partners who can support their business and technology development. Congratulations to all the Perovskite finalists, and we're very excited to see what you're going to do next as part of the next phase of the competition. And last but certainly not least, earlier this month, we announced 10 teams moving forward in the Solar Prize round six. So the Solar Prize was what started the American Made Challenges. These teams were each awarded $100,000 in cash prizes and $75,000 in technical support vouchers for their innovations 
to move the needle in the solar industry. As the flagship challenge in the American Made program, the Solar Prize encourages the rapid development of innovative solar energy solutions capable of addressing the toughest challenges in the industry. The finalists, who represent eight states, are developing technologies in photovoltaics, systems integration, systems operation, finance and business, and system design. Additionally, three teams were awarded additional funding through the Justice, Equity, Diversity, and Inclusion, or JEDI, contest, which rewards teams whose innovations include solutions that can boost access to solar deployment in underserved communities and increase job opportunities for folks in those communities as well. Now, all team tens move on, all, sorry, all 10 teams move on to the final GO contest where they'll perform a pilot test and pitch their solutions at a live demo day for the first time in a few years, which is really exciting at the major RE Plus conference in Las Vegas. Congratulations to all round six finalists. I look forward to hearing your pitches this September. And speaking of the Solar Prize, I'm really excited to hear from our next guest speaker who's actually a Solar Prize alumnus. So Debbie, back to you. Thank you for, for inviting me to be here. Awesome, thank you, Garrett. Thanks for those updates. Solar's always turning out amazing prizes and a lot of them. So thank you for your efforts there. Um, yes, um, as Garrett mentioned, we are lucky to have a uh, Solar Prize winner from round five here with us today. Um, this is Eric Hafter from Origami Solar. Um, and we'd like to hear from him and see what his experience was with going through the Solar Prize. Well, good Eric, morning. over to you. Good morning, awesome. and thank you for inviting me. Uh, as she said, my name is Eric Hafter. I'm the founder of Origami Solar, and I've been in the industry for over 30 years. This has given me a front row seat to an incredible evolution. I recall when a 10 kilowatt system was a big deal and we'd get a mayor to show up. And sometime later, Arnold Schwarzenegger cut the ribbon on a 300 kilowatt system we built for Staples Center. Now, gigawatt systems are being built. It's truly remarkable. Next slide, please. So last September, Origami Solar won the American Made Solar Contest Grand Prize. Winning the AMSC was huge validation for our technology and the winnings played a major role in allowing us to advance our company. In addition, our partners in the AMC were instrumental in helping us hone and evolve our business model. And the testing vouchers have proven to be very, very important and valuable to us. And we're currently undergoing uh, testing at Sandia Labs up in Michigan. The AMSC also demonstrates that significant innovation is still happening in the solar industry and right here in the United States. Next slide, please. So I'll take you a few minutes to let you know what Origami has done since winning the AMSC Grand Prize. We've evolved our business model. We started with a licensing model because Modco's were vertically integrating, but with huge increases in demand, they are, all, they are using all of their resources just to keep up. Over the last year, Origami has also made significant progress educating and activating the steel ecosystem with both steel manufacturers and steel fabrication partners. So I'm very pleased to let you know that with our steel ecosystem partners, Origami Solar will become a frame production company. Last year, we made our Gen 1 frames, which proved to be stronger than needed. I'm very excited to announce that our Gen 2 frames have been produced and are ready for full module testing. These frames use 25% less steel, making them lighter, but still stronger and stiffer. As a matter of fact, test results continue to demonstrate that origami solar steel frames are superior to aluminum in every metric. US Modcos using origami steel frames will reduce GHG contribution by over 200,000 metric tons per gigawatt. Just let that sink in. And origami solar steel frames continue to do a better job protecting the solar active materials. I'm very excited to announce that origami solar in conjunction with our steel ecosystem partners will build a new factory right here in the United States. Our production goal for this factory is five gigawatts. We've signed our first Modco agreement and have multiple new agreements in process. I also wanna mention that the IRA specifically targets the US steel industry with incentives to increase domestic steel and solar projects. As we have continued to innovate with partners across the value chain, 
it has become clear to us and others that we as an industry need to think about the frame as an extension of the mounting structure and that the frame should be considered a racking component. We hope to have steel frames included in the IRA to help advance domestic steel, leading to continued increases of steel in the solar industry. Next slide, please. So to recap, origami steel frames are significantly better for the environment, reducing CO2 by over 80 kilograms per module. And origami steel frames simply perform better than taller aluminum frames, better protecting solar cells from cracking due to loading, resulting in fewer new cell cracks and reduced cell crack propagation. We believe this will lead to increased energy harvest over the life of solar modules. Thank you so much for including me in this year's celebration. Happy Earth Day. Thank you so much for being here. <laughs> Thanks for being here, Eric. Um, and thank you so much for, for your efforts. And it's exciting that you have a, a manufacturing facility coming to the United States. That's awesome. Yep. Uh, all right, we're going to move over to the Water um, Power Technologies Office next. Awesome. Thanks for joining us, Carrie. Carrie, I'd like to introduce Carrie Schmaus. We're going to hear first from her, her about the Water Power Technologies Office prizes. And then immediately following, we're going to hear from another prize winner from Water. So I'll send it over to you, Carrie. Great. Thank you so much. And good afternoon, everybody. Uh, such a pleasure to be here with you virtually. I uh, wish I was in person. Um, I'm Carrie Schmaus. I'm a technology manager at the Water Power Technologies Office, which is an EERE office at the Department of Energy. Uh, for those who aren't familiar, we fund research and development for marine energy. So that's ocean energy, waves, tides, currents, um, as well as hydropower. So really excited to tell you about four prizes that we have going on right now. On the next slide, the first one is called the Innovating Distributed Embedded Energy Prize. And on the next slide, I can show you some overview information. Um, and so the Innovative Distributed Embedded Energy Prize, or INDEEP, is a three-phase, $2.3 million prize that invites participants within and outside of the wave energy community to advance distributed embedded energy conversion technologies, also known as deck tech. And I'm personally really excited about this prize because not only is it investigating a new area of marine energy research, we also have a really robust participant support network. And so folks outside the wave energy industry actually have a chance to get up to date on the state of the art of marine energy and can participate alongside folks that have been working in marine energy for years. And so I just want to draw your attention to the next support webinar, which is actually tomorrow, and it's an introduction to wave energy. So if that's interesting, please do check out our Hero X site for more information. And you can see that we do have a series of webinars that go through everything you would need to know um, to participate in this prize. And another thing to note is that phase one is currently open and it closes on August 25th. Um, so we're really excited for later this summer, we can see what comes in for that first phase. And the next slide is the Inclusive Energy Innovation Prize. And um, there's actually an event coming up. It's called Pitch, which is Presenting Impact Through Communities at Home. And that's June 13th and 14th, um, right where the folks in person are in Golden, Colorado. And on the next slide, um, there's some more details here. So this event, Pitch, is the culmination of phase two of the Inclusive Energy Innovation Prize. And it's going to feature all the ways competitors have been working with their communities to ensure a just and equitable clean energy transition. And so this is a super exciting event. Um, during that, competitors will pre present their final pitches and share all the exciting changes that have been made in their communities through this prize. Um, there's also an opportunity for stakeholders and potential sponsors to network with each other and with the competitors. Um, and then of course, prize administrators will also share some updates on the future of the prize. So don't miss that event. Again, it's right there on the NREL campus in Golden, Colorado. That's June 13th and 14th of this year. Next up, we have our series of collegiate competitions, starting with the Hydropower Collegiate Competition. So on the next slide, again, more details. Um, the Hydropower Collegiate Competition is a partnership between the Hydropower Foundation, NREL, and the Water Power Office, and it's open to undergraduate and graduate students, and they come together, build a team, and offer solutions to complex hydropower challenges. Through this, these students gain industry experience as well as greater knowledge of hydropower's potential to contribute to a clean energy future. 
And um, I do want to highlight we have an event coming up, um, the Hydropower Collegiate Competition final event which will be co-located co with the Marine Energy Collegiate Competition final event, which I'll talk about on the Hindi here in just a moment. But um, this final event is going to be during Water Power Week, uh, which is in May in Washington, DC. Um, and then I'll also note that the applications for um, the 2024 uh, cohort just closed last night. So we're really excited to see what comes through um, in our future cohorts. And then finally, the last competition to share with you today is the Marine Energy Collegiate Competition. And so this competition is managed by NREL on behalf of the Water Power Office, and it's very similar to the Hydropower Competition. It challenges teams of undergraduate and graduate students to offer unique solutions to complex marine energy challenges. And again, we're having um, the final event at Water Power Week, which is May 7th through 9th of this year here in Washington, D.C., and um, it's really going to be a fabulous event, bringing these teams together to share all the work that they've done through this um, and lots of networking opportunities. And really just for me personally, so inspiring to see the next generation of young people coming together and thinking about marine energy and hydropower. So I hope you're able to join us for that. Um, and very similarly, that last uh, 2024 applications closed just last night. Um, so can't, I've said it again. I'll, I've said it once. I'll say it again. We're really excited to see what comes through and that next cohort. Um, so with that, I'll just thank you all for having me. Happy Earth Day um, and pass it back to Debbie. Thank you. Thank you, Carrie. Thank you. Awesome work from the Water Power um, Office. That's awesome. Uh, we also have uh, Alex Farley from Team Hydroflex here with us today. He's going to be speaking uh, about um, his experience uh, with uh, winning the H2O prize. Welcome, Alex. Thank you so much, Debbie and Carrie as well. Um, yeah, my name is Alex Farley. Um, I'm the lead software developer at a Utah-based startup, um, Grid Elevated. I'm also a graduate student at the University of Utah. I'm really excited to talk about um, Hydroflex, our, our winning solution of the Hydropower Operations Optimization Prize. And I'd, I'd also like to acknowledge Majid Majidi, Luis Rodriguez, and Dr. Masood Parvania as well for their, their participation within this, as well as Grid Elevated and the Utah Smart Energy Lab at the University of Utah. Next slide, please. Yeah, so the Hydropower Operations Optimization Prize is thought to put us into the shoes of a hydropower manager. So essentially what we are seeking to do is create a water release schedule for a hydropower um, unit or system. And so when we're creating that schedule, we are seeking to maximize environmental and economic benefits of those units. Um, it's an especially compelling um, problem in that hydropower obviously is sustainable and renewable, but it's also dispatchable unlike um, solar or wind. So there's, there's quite a bit of room to actually optimize its dispatch and its production. And so we were seeking to maximize its impact from a sustainability and then an economic sense as well. Um, within this project, we are also considering the constraints of the existing water system. Um, so looking at reservoirs, rivers, flows, um, and then also the power system as well. So we were looking at the actual grid, the actual infrastructure, ensuring that we're actually meeting demand. Um, this was a three phase competition and then each phase built on itself with increasing complexity and we are we are really lucky and we're honored to have won all three phases of the competition. Next slide please. So looking at our inspiration um, in regard to participating in this prize, uh, all our entire team where we really get excited about power systems engineering. Um, it's the, the presented problem was especially compelling in that it's considering both the power system and the water system. It's looking at economics and sustainability. Um, but moreover, we're really motivated um, in our work to apply and leverage our, uh, our engineering skill set to have a greater impact on climate change. I think it's really a great, it's right in line with the theme of the event today. Um, we believe as power engineers, we can have a, a truly significant impact um, on, on mitigating the, the effects of the climate crisis. And, and so having this problem framed in one of the objectives to promote sustainability was extremely exciting for us and, and really inspiring. Um, next slide, please. 
So going through this actual challenge in itself, it had a really unique problem set up. Um, so it used this platform called Top Coder, which essentially is this real-time leaderboard and would score your optimization and your codes basically immediately. And you would see where you would stack up amongst your peers. Um, and so with this, it really created this atmosphere and sense of urgency, intensity, and, and innovation as well. You would, you would wake up in the morning and see where you were amongst your other peers. And I think it was especially unique in this competition because that really provided a, a, a driver for innovation. Um, it wasn't as if we were working towards a single end report. We were constantly innovating um, our model, constantly trying to get it to perform just a tiny bit better. Um, and so, so that was something really unique within this competition. Um, another challenge for us, and it's still something ongoing that's, that's a really important focus, is developing something that's industry applicable. So not only did we want to build this high performing optimization um, software and code, we wanted to build something that could actually be applied and integrated into existing um, industry systems. And so we really tried to take a step back and look at software development as a whole and build a product that could easily be um, integrated without a complete overhaul of, of legacy systems that have been in place and worked well for decades. Next slide, please. So looking at impacts of this and going forward, we're, we're really excited to be continuing development um, with this with this project with Hydroflex uh, at a Utah-based startup, Grid Elevated. Um, and, and we're really excited for our future and our, our coming growth. Um, we're actively seeking to partner with industry, um, specifically utilities or hydropower managers and see this, this platform and this model we've developed actually come to life to see the actual environmental and economic benefits that we spent, spent so much time optimizing be realized in a real physical sense. Um, so with that, I'd like to say thank, thank you everyone and, and happy Earth Day. Thank you for joining us and thanks for that update. That was great. All right, we're moving to an in-person speaker next. Um, I'd like to welcome Catherine Harsani from Office of Technology Transitions to the stage. Thank you, Debbie. Um, hi, everyone. I'm super excited to be here today and to see you all or meet you all in person. Um, so I'm from the Office of Technology Transitions and I'll be providing updates and announcements on two prizes that we have in progress. And so the first prize um, is the EPIC prize. It's the energy program for innovation clusters. Um, and we're, right now we're on round two. And this prize is a year long $4 million competition that incentivizes and recognizes regional energy incubators to develop programming and build regional uh, partnerships to increase local business productivity and improve the commercial success of startups and develop clean energy jobs. The prize seeks to address a capital gap in supporting these critical organizations and recognize the great work that these organizations are doing to support energy startups and entrepreneurs. Uh, so the Epic Prize Round 2 is a three-phase competition. Last December, 24 finalists were awarded at the end of Phase 1 and received $50,000 for their program designs. Now, we're officially announcing the finalists for phase two, where incubators put their plans into action and provided leading indicators of their success. So these uh, 10 incubators are each receiving $100,000 in cash prizes and moving on to the final phase, prove it, where they'll demonstrate their success in accomplishing their planned goals. So big uh, congratulations to our phase two winners. And you can click uh, the link in the chat to read the press release and follow our progress to learn more about these EPIC finalists and the EPIC program. And then next, I'm also excited to highlight another OTT-led prize, Energy Tech Up. So this collegiate competition challenges student teams to develop a business plan around a high potential energy technology and then present their commercialization plan in a pitch competition, offering over 200 thousand uh, dollars in cash prizes the competition awards funds to regional winners national winners and several technology specific bonus prizes sponsored by program offices across the department of energy and in early april 
16 teams traveled to Austin, Texas to compete in the national pitch event where they presented their business plans to a panel of industry judges. So congratulations to students from New York University, the University of Virginia, and the University of Kansas for their success in the Energy Tech Up 2023. I'm also pleased to announce that OTT is already planning another year of the Energy Tech University Prize. So if you're a student or know a student who is interested in energy, entrepreneurship, business development, or just winning uh, cash prizes, I highly encourage you to participate in the Energy Tech Up 2024. Yeah. Lastly, so all of these prizes and the, pro the programs we do in OTT uh, further our mission to enhance the economic competitiveness, leadership and innovation, and impactful technologies throughout the nation. So thank you everyone and happy Earth Day. Thank you, Catherine. I actually had the honor of being um, at Austin for that event, and those pitches were amazing. Those student teams were very, very, very awesome. So come on over. Uh, the next uh, speakers are um, Emmanuel Picara and Rebecca Simkowitz. Thanks for joining. Uh, we're excited to share some information with you. Uh, so the energy sector is rapidly evolving to meet the growing demand for clean energy, which creates an opportunity to invest in domestic manufacturing and strengthen our supply chains. And we need secure, resilient, and diverse supply chains and domestic manufacturing capabilities to maximize the benefits of federal investments in climate and clean energy and provide economic opportunity for all Americans. So to help, DOE intends to announce the Manufacture of Advanced Key Energy Infrastructure Technologies, or Make It Prize. Through two tracks, Make It will award approximately $30 billion to promote and enable domestic manufacturing of critical energy technology components while engaging communities to catalyze manufacturing activity at the regional level. Thank you, Becca. So the facilities track is one of, uh, is one of the two tracks of the Make It Prize. Uh, the goal is to accelerate the development of new manufacturing facilities on uh, their focus on uh, key components that are needed for uh, the emerging uh, clean energy infrastructure that we're building in this country. We wanna bring uh, these manufacturing facilities from a plan to being shovel ready and uh, we're gonna focus on specific technologies that are uh, critical for um, uh, clean energy infrastructure and then that we wanna accelerate um, for a private liftoff, for commercialization liftoff. If you go to the EROX platform, uh, you will see a detailed list of technologies that cover clean energy, uh, long duration energy storage, upgrades to an electric grid and carbon capture. Uh, the idea again is to, uh, is that we need to, to establish a robust domestic supply chain for these technologies. And uh, that's why we are investing 30, approximately $30 million uh, on this prize. Um, it, winners will get up to $5 million if they show they are shovel ready. So if they can uh, prove us that they've secured access to a site for the manufacturing facilities, they obtain all the permits, uh, they finalize the blueprints for the facility and they've secured financing. Uh, so this prize is really for us a way to put a spotlight on these uh, technologies and accelerate the timeline so we can uh, start developing this, uh, this infrastructure as quickly as possible. And uh, if you are interested, if you're interested in manufacturing and you have uh, the, the uh, interest in establishing something domestically, please go to the EROX uh, platform for additional information. We intend to announce this, to open the prize in the summer, so stay tuned. Uh, and we look forward to uh, seeing your applications. Thank you. And the second track of the Make It Prize is the Strategies track, which aims to promote interest, engagement, and economic opportunity around clean energy manufacturing, particularly in disadvantaged communities. So successful competitors in this track will develop a roadmap for attracting clean energy manufacturing in their region and secure interest from at least one manufacturer in establishing a facility in their area. 
Uh, so this track is looking to build interest and involvement around manufacturing clean energy technologies, expanding the potential for more clean energy jobs and opportunity around clean energy manufacturing. So we really encourage organizations that are looking to attract clean energy manufacturing in their region and promote economic opportunity and development to read, to look at the Hero X platform for this track and follow the prize. Uh, so DOE intends to announce the Make It Prize in summer 2023 and open to competitors at that time. Again, please visit the Hero X pages and register to learn more and stay up to date. Thank you, Emmanuel and Becca. Thanks for joining in person today too. It's great to have your smiling faces here. All right, next, I would like to turn it over to Terrence Mosley um, from the Energy Efficiency and Renewable Energy front office uh, to announce a new prize. So welcome, Terrence. Hi, hey, thank you so much. Uh, happy Earth Day to everyone. And uh, thank you so much for having me today. You know, all of the program offices have been having so much fun with doing prizes. I had to prove that the front office could come to the table and do some things as well. So uh, my name is Terrence Mosley, and I'm the Senior Advisor for Diversity and STEM for EERE. And I'm really excited to talk with you today about a new prize that we are officially launching next week called the HBCU Clean Energy Education Prize. And before I actually get into the prize itself, I just wanted to give you a couple of background data points for your consideration to show you how important this opportunity is for us to include those that have really been historically underrepresented in STEM fields and specifically in the clean energy industry. Today, when we look at HBCUs, they represent only 3% of the total uh, um, academic institutions in the US. But when you look at the impact that they have, today they graduate 25% of black students in STEM fields. They also graduate 30% of black science and engineering PhD students. And they also represent 40% of black students that are pursuing graduate degrees across the board. So we know how important that HBCUs are to diversifying STEM fields, the clean energy fields, and just um, our, our workforce in general. And so we feel that this is a really important time, as Alejandro mentioned earlier, to deepen our relationship with historically black colleges and universities across the country and really help them help equip them uh, with needs that, they, that they'll have for the future to really fully participate uh, students and faculty within the new clean energy transition. So if you look at this prize though, it is, it's really aimed to help HBCUs connect students of all ages to clean energy, educational and career development programming and the prize itself, the total of the prize, uh, we're very happy that we have 7.75 million that is uh, eligible for uh, cash prizes for, for, for this prize. And it's split between two tracks. And HBCUs can apply to one or both tracks. And if you go to the next slide, we'll just talk a little bit uh, about those tracks. The first is the Inspire track. And if you think of it as, as far as inspiring uh, K through 12 youth and community college youth to really think about uh, 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 careers, future and potential careers in clean energy, we have to start somewhere. So we really want to inspire you to think about and be exposed to clean energy technologies and clean energy careers. So we have a, a, a Inspire track where we're going to be dedicating $1 million across the board to, uh, to, to give to 20 winners from HBCUs to have summer camps, summer bridge programs, after school programming, whatever their creative ideas may be uh, in order to spread the word and educate and expose more minority youth to careers and clean energy technologies. And when we get to the partnerships track, the remaining funds are gonna be working towards helping uh, HBCUs to create partnerships and both academic and industry uh, industry partnerships to be able to fully recognize the potential they have to set up a total clean energy ecosystem 
within their curricula and within their programs. And so if you look at it, I use the word ecosystem a lot when I talk about this prize, because if you look at the total, if you take the Inspire track and you take the K through 12 community college uh, uh, students, and then you merge that into activities that we're trying to do with the partnerships track and really identify um, tracks for students to, to either go into clean energy industries or to go on to uh, uh, pursue graduate degrees in STEM fields that will lead to careers in clean energy. We're really trying to empower, empower these HBCUs to create their own vision for a clean energy ecosystem where they can take students from beginning to end and have, have us and the, and, and, and the, the workforce be the, uh, the, be the eventual beneficiaries of the, uh, of the product. So with that said, um, the, 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 the website address will be released today. Uh, I think they're putting that in the chat now. And we really are excited to have people follow the prize over the next year. We want you to visit our Hero X page. And also we want you to uh, follow it because the rules of updates will be coming soon. We'll be, uh, you'll be able to follow the prize and other important uh, updates connected with this prize. And uh, what, with that said, I just thank you so much for your time and your consideration. And we're really excited to do this. So thank you, thank you for inviting me. Great, thank you so much, Terrence. <laughs> thanks, it's been fun working on this one with you. So thanks for joining Terrence. Thank you. All right. Coming up next is the geothermal office with Zachary Frone. Uh, thanks for joining, Zachary. Thanks for having me today. Uh, again, I'm from the geothermal technologies office, uh, and today I'll be providing you with a quick update on uh, two prizes that our office has in progress. So uh, we'll go to the next slide there. We'll start with the geophone prize. Next slide. Uh, the Geophone Prize actually launched on Earth Day 2022, so a year ago. Uh, it's a three-phase, $3.65 million competition designed at addressing the challenges of operating seismic sensors in geothermal environments. Um, traditional seismic monitoring tools cannot withstand high temperatures and corrosive fluids often found in geothermal wells. Uh, so high temperature sensors are critical to the development of future geothermal resources. Uh, GTO is focused on EGS technology or enhanced geothermal systems uh, because there's a potential to enable up to 60 gigawatts of uh, projected electrical uh, capacity by 2050. Um, from the slide here, you can see uh, phase one, competitors proposed high temperature uh, seismic sensor concepts. Uh, and we actually had a fairly even split between electronic solutions and fiber optic solutions, which is uh, an interesting development. Um, phase one concluded and semifinalists were announced uh, last December. Uh, next slide, please. Uh, we can see here our, our 10 phase one semifinalists. They each received $75,000 in cash and up to $75,000 in vouchers to access tools, equipment, and expertise at the national labs and private organizations that are part of the American Made Network to help advance their solutions. Uh, the semifinalists are now in phase two of the prize where they're currently hard at work furthering their geophone designs. Uh, you can learn more about this prize and the semifinalists um, in the link that is provided in the chat on the HeroX site. Uh, next slide, and I'll move on to the geothermal lithium extraction prize. Uh, as you may be aware, uh, our domestic lithium supply is a critical element in clean energy and clean energy supply chain. Uh, annual lithium resource potential in the Salton Sea region of California is estimated to be around 600,000 tons, which currently exceeds the annual U.S. demand for lithium and could, could transform the U.S. into a net lithium in, uh, uh, exporter. Uh, this prize is designed to incentivize the advancement of sustainable lithium extraction technologies. Next slide, please. All right. The uh, geothermal lithium extraction prize is three phases over 24 months with a total of $4 million in prize winnings. Uh, the prize looks to develop technologies that can lower the cost and ener energy consumption of lithium extraction, exploring direct conversion of geothermal brine to battery-ready lithium hydroxide, 
and also expanding the geothermal workforce. Uh, next slide, please. Thanks. Uh, the, there are five finalists now in phase three, uh, as you can see on the, on the map on the slide. Uh, our teams are currently fabricating and testing innovations for a chance uh, for the $2 million prize pool. Uh, you can also learn more about the Lithium Prize in the link that was just provided and on the HeroX website. Uh, that's all for today. Thanks for inviting me to uh, highlight Geothermal's uh, prizes. Awesome, thank you for joining. All right, the next update comes from the Wind Energy Technologies Office with Nathan McKenzie. Hello, uh, my name is Nate McKenzie and I'm the Technology Manager for Offshore Wind here at EERE's Wind Energy Technologies Office, or WIDO. Thank you for having me today. Next slide. I'm excited to share with you the wonderful work that WIDO and NREL have accomplished together thus far having established the very first WIDO funded prize, FLOWIN, or Floating Offshore Wind Readiness Prize. Among the biggest concerns with any wind technology, and floating offshore wind is no exception, are deployment and cost reduction, and consequently supply chain and market readiness. FLOWIN was specifically created to address the most pressing challenges in floating offshore wind supply chain development, including everything you see here. So why focus on floating offshore wind? About two thirds of the nation's offshore wind resource potential is in areas with water depths greater than 60 meters where floating offshore wind turbines are more practical and cost effective than fixed foundation turbines. Flow in is a three phase com competition open to floating wind platform designers, fabricators and project site developers. And the prize aims to bridge manufacturing and logistics gaps to help meet the Biden administration's goals to reduce the cost of floating offshore wind by 70% and deploy 15 gigawatts by 2035. Next slide. Phase one winners were carefully selected by a team of expert judges based on their floating platform designs that are not only innovative, but also feasible for developing a thriving system of floating offshore wind. Our nine phase one winners were announced at the International Partnership Forum and each received $100,000 in cash and $75,000 in vouchers for technical support at, at the national laboratories. In total, the three phase flow in prize has a cash pool of 5.85 million plus up to 1.2 million in technical support. Next slide. Here you'll see the breadth of innovative work that is becoming eligible to enter phase two of the flow in prize. Every coast in the United States is represented along with a diversity of platform types that catalyzes how we in the United States can act today to expand floating offshore wind. Next slide. Phase two is now officially open to the winners of phase one and the winners of the next stage will be announced around January of 2024. There will be up to five phase two winners, each receiving 450,000 in cash and additional lab vouchers valued at $100,000. From there, phase two winners will be eligible to enter phase three, where competitors will need to establish an industrialization pathway from their current stage of technology development to deployment in gigawatt scale floating offshore wind farms. We expect to see around three winners in this final phase of flow and with each of these winners receiving a cash prize of 900,000. Next slide. With that, I thank you for your time and look forward to the rest of the sessions. Thank you. Thank you, Nate. All right, next up is Miles Rogers from the SCEP office, which stands for State and Community Energy Programs. Are you here with us, Miles? Oh, okay. Sorry, Andrea. <laughs> you're, you're, you're welcome to start. Sounds great. I will uh, jump in for the State and Community Energy Program. If you want to jump to our slides, uh, thank you so much for having me today virtually and excited to be here to share about the Energy Class Prize. If you could jump forward a few slides, that would be great. There we go. All right. So the Energy Class Prize is a four and a half million dollar competition designed to help some of the nation's highest need schools make critical energy and healthy improvements by helping to establish and train energy managers. 
The goal of the Energy Class Prize is to provide resources to staff and train personnel on operations and maintenance, strategic energy management, project development, funding pathways, and related topics to deepen knowledge for advancing the fiscal and environmental sustainability of their schools. The prize also focuses on operation and maintenance training and continuing education of the LEA staff in some of our neediest school districts so they can gain the knowledge and need to lead in the energy and indoor air quality projects and identify funding to implement these improvements. Next slide, please. So this is a two phase prize. The phase one just ended. And in the first phase, local educational agencies or the LEAs or school districts uh, were asked to submit their statement of need and letters of intent, uh, demonstrate their commitment to make building energy upgrades and identify staff to participate in the program. We'll be announcing the phase one energy class price finalists very soon, so please stay tuned. 25 LEAs across the country will receive $100,000 in cash prizes and will move on to the final phase. In phase two, the energy managers will receive 80 to 160 hours of online educational courses delivered by training professionals and receive one-on-one -on -one support and coaching to implement critical upgrades in school facilities so that students can learn in safe and healthy classrooms. So stay tuned for our winner announcement and we'll share those on the American Made channels and the energy.gov soon. Uh, thanks so much for having me today and happy Earth Day. And Debbie, I'll pass it back to you. Okay, thank you, Andrea. Sorry for the switch, but we're gonna go back to Miles Rogers next. Uh, yeah, sorry about that, everyone. The joys of being on technology, my laptop randomly decided it needed to update right then. Um, <laughs> but it's, uh, it's nice seeing everyone. Uh, my name is Miles Rogers and I'm a management and program analyst um, for the State Energy Program, which is in the Office of State and Community Energy Programs. Um, and I'm here to share the Community Clean Energy Coalition Prize, which is currently in progress right now. And this prize is meant to address local energy challenges and inequities through the development of community-based coalitions uh, with existing organizations like nonprofits, schools, city governments, and more. And this is a $2.1 million prize. And through this prize, coalitions are competing in three phases to develop, plan, and implement solutions to the challenges and opportunities they identify. So we can go to the next slide. And this diagram uh, kind of shows how this prize works. And in phase one, you can see we are developing the coalition with 10 winners being selected in phase one. And there's no down select in this prize. So in phase two, those same 10 winners will are currently uh, creating a plan of action to address their uh, coalition objectives. And in phase three, which starts in uh, about a month or two, um, these same teams will plan and collect data um, to implement their, their prize. And in each phase, they're creating problem-solving momentum in each community from identifying energy challenges or inequities to successfully planning, developing, and executing the plan to address it and to measure success. So we can go to the next slide. And we uh, announced 10 phase one winners in February of this year, and they are currently busy developing their plans uh, to serve those underserved communities in these states and territories. And you can note that several of our teams are working in multiple communities. And we can go to the next slide. This is my last slide, but these are our phase one winners and their initiatives range are, are really wide ranging and they, they range for, from workforce development pipelines to photovoltaics and agriculture to development of energy center networks. And we even have a prize that's addressing uh, kindergarten through 12 uh, through art and education. And in phase two, the winners will be announced in June with the final phase three winners being announced in December of this year at our in-person uh, coalition summit that's taking place in Atlanta, Georgia. 
And we're really looking forward to the impacts each of these uh, coalitions will make in their communities. So thank you again um, and happy Earth Day. Thank you, Miles. All right, we're moving on to Courtney Haynes with OSED. Thank you so much, Debbie. I think we're getting my slides. That's me. And I apologize for this weird, I don't know what's happening with this circle in the background. So we're just going to roll with it. It's technology that the world we live in. So I'm just going to talk to you about the energy, um, this prize that really was born out of a new initiative, the Energy Improvements in Rural or Remote Areas Program, which is out of the Office of Clean Energy Demonstrations. You heard from one of my colleagues a little bit ago about, about his opportunity as well. And this provision is a one billion dollar program to really meet the needs, costs, energy resiliency, and availability for rural and remote communities across the country. We, we really went around the country for many months to try to get an understanding of how best to use this $1 billion and really leverage the opportunity. And, and the commonality that we kept hearing is, we need a little bit more flexibility. We're small communities, we don't have a lot of capacity. And so we had to take that back and really consider how to utilize funding mechanisms to really meet these needs and support these often very small and underserved communities. So hence, next slide. We planned and coordinated and recently, about a month and a half ago, launched the Energizing Rural Communities Prize, which is still open, um, taking applications, and we'll get into the timeline here in a bit. Um, but this is 15 million, and it is going to be used to pilot partnership plans for the creation of innovative financing models to really help rural and remote communities improve their energy systems. It's important to note that for this entire provision in this program, we were given a definition from Congress. So we are defining rural and remote communities as a city, town, or municipality, or incorporated area serving 10,000 people or less. Next slide. The prize goals are quite broad as far as what we're looking for, how you can use the funding. It really centers on building that partnership and financial mechanisms to initiate steps, that one step forward in that unique community of what they need. We're hoping that this type of capacity building and this work really allows for the opportunity to not only build the plan, but initiate the progress. Also, one of the goals, as many of my other colleagues have stated, we really want to look at how the partnerships financing mechanisms align to those Justice 40 initiatives and really consider the development of the deployment of community benefits plans, which are a part of all OSED programs. Next slide. This is probably the most important slide. Um, there's going to be two tracks of the 15 million. 10 million is going to go into the partner track. 5 million is going in the finance track. It is an open price right now with applications due on May 24th for the first phase and we'll announce winners in July. Then by next July, we'll open up applications for phase two. Moving to the next slide, just to kind of double down, there are two tracks. You can apply to both tracks, but it has to be for different purposes. The partner track, again, is all about the creation of new stakeholders coming together to do X, Y, and Z. Again, to initiate the unique components, characteristics of that community's energy plan, or if the partnership already exists, really highlighting what could be new or what could be deepened to meet those set forth objectives. Next slide. The financing track is really thinking about how are we going to fund this initiative? How are we going to change maybe infrastructure systems or create stakeholder groups to really coordinate for long-term sustainability? So it really allows for an opportunity for community development financing institutions to come in um, here as well. So again, you know, both of these tracks are all about capacity as far as bringing people together to initiate plans and move forward or thinking about how you're going to bring capital together to initiate and move those plans. Next slide. 
This is open to a broad range of eligible participants, which are listed here, um, like, like most prizes. And final slide, I believe, is just where information to get um, more details. You can certainly take down the email. The NREL team will, they're always on it to respond very fast to any questions. Also on the herox.com slash rural energy page, we the prize has been open. So there already are a lot of FAQs out there that you can read through, teams formulated, and you can really get all the details you need. But we're very excited about this prize. We really believe in the impact and the community-driven solutions in rural and remote communities. And hopefully you'll reach out to get more information. So thank you so much for having me. Again, I am sorry about whatever is happening here with the circle <laughs> and my background, but I hope you all have a great Earth Day, great Earth Week, and just thank you for everybody's work um, in moving, moving our country forward here. Great, thank you. No problem at all with the circle, we liked it. Um, all right, uh, next up is Rory Jacobson from uh, the Fossil Energy and Carbon Management Office. Hey, uh, happy Earth Day, everyone. And I'm actually very jealous of the circle, very Earth Day oriented. Uh, my name is Rory. I'm the Senior Advisor for the Office of Fossil Energy and Carbon Management at the Department of Energy. Uh, and I guess before diving into our programming, really wanted to just thank the National Energy Technology Laboratory and the National Renewable Energy Laboratory for all of their support in developing these prize rules. Uh, today, I'm going to be talking about direct air capture, a different kind of carbon capture than we conventionally think of. Uh, typically, point source carbon capture captures the emissions off of a smokestack. Uh, the prizes that I'll be talking about today are actually for a different kind of air capture uh, or carbon capture DAC uh, or direct air capture removes emissions that are already stored in our atmosphere. So those legacy carbon pollutions uh, that are already, already, already have been emitted uh, and that we need to remove to meet our climate targets. So DAC is a really important tool for both counterbalancing uh, the difficult to decarbonize or extremely costly to decarbonize sectors in our economy, uh, and also drawing down those emissions after we've hit net zero to achieve our climate targets. Next slide, please. So innovation support for direct air capture has been generally, uh, I think, lacking ambition to this point. Uh, and this is why we're meeting that need with the pre-commercial DAC prices to really show the amount of innovation that the industry needs to move forward. Uh, the DAC prizes, or particularly the pre-commercial DAC prizes addressed here today, are intended to fast-track DAC technology advancements and create a community of resources and support to fortify the industry. So the first of these that I'm going to be talking about is the DAC EPIC prize, uh, or the Energy Program for Innovation Clusters. This prize is targeted at incubators and accelerators to break down the barriers that innovators face while moving their technologies to market. Uh, we designed this track particularly because we acknowledge that funding for incubators and accelerators uh, is not where it needs to be and is generally not widely available at this time, especially for direct air capture. So we both aim to uh, encourage existing incubators and accelerators to develop curriculum and programming for direct air capture, and also encourage those incubators and accelerators that are already working on direct air capture and carbon removal technologies to build a more diverse and inclusive field. Uh, so the DAC EPIC price supports incubators and accelerators with solutions such as networking, prototype development, intellectual property management, the reduced commercialization barriers for DAC technologies to help get these technologies to scale uh, into markets more rapidly so that they can have climate impact. Uh, the competitors in this program will work through three different phases to develop uh, their curriculum and network and community, and they will compete for a total of 3.7 million cash prizes. Uh, I believe the link is in the chat for those who want to visit Hero X and learn more and apply by June 22nd. Next slide, please. Great. So the second track of this prize is actually dedicated to those entrepreneurs that are building innovative or direct air capture technologies, um, specifically identifying barriers to scaling direct air capture technologies, including just the thermodynamic complexity associated with building these technologies. So. The DAC, or the DAC Technology Prize encourages scalable technologies and innovation through cash prizes and technical assistance to break down those barriers and advance the industry. Uh, and so similarly, in this instance, the innovators will compete through three different rounds uh, for 3.2 million in cash prizes. And I think the really exciting aspect of this is $800,000 uh, in support for technical assistance vouchers to work with national labs. And you can visit Hero X uh, and apply to participate in this program by September 26th. And generally speaking, invite all of you who have either experience in direct air capture technology development 
or just in developing incubators and accelerators to consider applying to this program. Uh, happy Earth to everyone, and thank you so much for having me. Thank you, Rory. All right, next up, we have Andre Piera from Office of Electricity. Thank you very much, Debbie. Uh, and, and first, really wanted to thank uh, the NREL team and you, Debbie, for your leadership. I think the, uh, the American Raid prizes really have become an important uh, component of, of OE's portfolio. It really assisting us in, in reaching out to different uh, stakeholders and, and really being able to capture innovation uh, really across the country. So really thanks, NREL, uh, for leading this. Um, next slide, please. So, so for my presentation, I'll talk a little bit about some of the prizes uh, we have ongoing uh, here with, with OE. We currently have three uh, ongoing prizes. Um, and I'm sure most of you are aware OE really is uh, the office uh, of the grid, uh, if you will. Uh, we focus primarily on distribution and transmission scale uh, technologies. Uh, and, and the prize uh, competition really is uh, an important tool uh, in helping us address some of the challenges uh, the grid is going through and making sure we're able to make the grid more resilient, more secure, um, and more reliable. Uh, next slide, please. So the first uh, prize competition I'll be talking about is the high voltage uh, direct current, direct current uh, prize, which still is uh, ongoing. We're expecting applications until uh, June the 7th. Uh, the rationale behind the HVDC prize was really to for us to capture uh, innovative ideas that can help accelerate the deployment of HVDC technologies uh, in the U.S. When we think of the grid of the future, the grid, of, the grid with greater penetration of renewables, HVDC technologies really are um, a key enabler that, that would allow us to, to connect uh, renewable generation to you know, different uh, population centers across the country, whether you're talking about you know, solar generation on the Southwest or offshore wind in, in the Northeast, I think HVDC really will be an important component of that. And, and the prior competition uh, really is trying to capture innovative ideas out there that can help us accelerate uh, HVDC deployment. Uh, next slide, please. So the second prize competition we have is called the Digitizing uh, utilities uh, prize, which aims to connect utilities uh, with, with, with different uh, teams of software develop developers and data experts to transform digital systems in the energy sector through data analytics, processing, quality assurance, storage, and deletion. So on the map, we have the phase one uh, winners. Uh, and right now, we're in the process of, of, of after we select phase one, uh, we're going to give them six months to partner with, with utilities, and then we're going to continue on uh, towards the phase two uh, winners. Next slide, please. And the last uh, OE Lab prize is the Energy Storage uh, Innovations Prize, in which, in many ways, is somewhat similar to the HVDC prize, in which we're mostly looking to capture uh, innovation within the energy storage space, you know, innovative chemistries, innovative technologies that can help uh, accelerate uh, deployment, of deployment and advance uh, grid scale energy storage uh, technologies. So we did have uh, recently a total of five uh, winners uh, and, and a number of, of runner, work, runner up, so really, so really uh, quality uh, applications and innovation out there. And I believe this is the last slide we have. So, Debbie, back to you. All right, thank you. Okay, last but not least, for sure, is Tina Karsberg. Uh, she is with the Advanced Materials and Manufacturing Technologies Office. And I also know that she's going to announce some live winners. So this is very exciting. Take it over, Tina. Hi, they won't let me start my video. Oh. Well, we hear you. That's good. Okay. All right. Well, I know we're late, so I'm going to try to use my best auctioneer voice. 
Good Perfect. morning, NREL. Here at MTEL headquarters, we are very excited to announce the stage two winners of the Cable Prize and provide an update on AMTO's other active prize. Uh, next slide, please. Uh, in 2021, the U.S. Department of Energy launched the conductivity enhanced materials for affordable breakthrough, leapfrog electric and thermal applications or cable conductor manufacturing prices supercharge our U.S. energy and manufacturing industries. The now $4.8 billion cable prize encourages researchers and inventors to develop and manufacture breakthrough conductivity enhanced materials. Competitors must make affordable conductors that de demonstrate significant enhancements in conductivity and enable U.S. manufacturers to leapfrog to next generation materials. In stage two, competitors took their materials from concept to reality, producing a microscale sample of their material for evaluation by Cable Prize approved testing labs. Next slide, please. We recognize these samples are early stage prototypes of experimental materials without the uniformity and hence higher conductivity we ultimately would expect in a manufactured product. Thus, I am super pleased that our winners exceeded the respective contest thresholds by up to 11%. Even if the percent conductivity increase were only a few percent, it still would represent huge energy savings and emissions reductions because the applications of these conductors in motors, transmission lines, and nearly everything electric is so widespread. Next slide. Since this was the first time, oh, I did it too soon. Okay, put it back, put it back. <laughs> Since this was the very first time the absolute value of conductivity has been used, it took a lot of extra steps over several months to accurately calibrate our testing for the three contests for which we received eligible entries. Beat copper for conductivity, beat a conductor system for aluminum conductor steel reinforced or ACSR transmission lines and beat a conductor system for the superconductors. So exactly one year after announcing the contest, I am super pleased to announce the cable stage two winners today during Earth Week. So next slide, please. <laughs> Instead mm -hmm. of opening an envelope today, as I announce each winner, my NREL colleague, Emily Evans, will drop the URL for the competition webpage for each competitor into the chat. In the beta conductor system for superconductors contest, a new competitor with a very cool magnesium diboride superconductor, Hypertech Research of Columbus, Ohio. In the beta conductor system for ACSR, we have two winners. Another new cable competitor, TS Conductor Systems, uh, a conductor corporation of Huntington Beach, who is looking to incorporate other cable winning materials into a system, and a returning cable winner, Nano AL of Ashland, Massachusetts, with a high strength aluminum alloy that beats ACSR without any reinforcement. And finally, last but not least, in the super competitive beat copper category, we have all returning cable competitors, Metalcraft Technologies of Athens, Ohio, NACO of Peachtree City, Georgia, and for um, a different copper graphene, I'm, I'm super pleased to announce this next winner, University of Colorado Boulder, because while CU was a previous comp cable competitor, unlike all the other winners, they weren't a winner last time. So it, uh, they win the most improved entry award. Finally, another winner that I am very pleased to announce, a high temperature Redco superconductor that is so awesome, they actually competed successfully in the super competitive copper contest. University of Houston of Houston, Texas, which also is a minority serving institution. These seven competitors, each won 200K in cash and 100K in non-cash voucher support to work with the National Laboratory in stage three. Competitors successful in these competitors will develop a larger sample of their conductivity enhanced material and provide more detailed information on how they plan to commercialize it. Finally, in stage three, up to four competitors will split a total pool of at least 2 million. On behalf of AMTO, I'm also, uh, next slide, please. On behalf of AMTO, I'm also excited to share the recently launched micro battery design prize. This prize is led by my colleague, Dr. Paul Sires, also of AMTO uh, at DOE. The, next slide, please. The US DOE launched the micro battery design prize back on March 8th. This two phase prize will inspire promising designs for batteries less than 100 cubic 
millimeters inside that yield devices with approved performance, safety, and recyclability. It's designed to advance innovative new designs, and accelerate their commercialization and integration into technologies needed for clean energy manufacturing, such as advanced semi sensor systems. Next slide. This, this prize includes two phases. Phase one idea, uh, which is close, which has a closing date for submissions of June 29th, 2023, and phase two test where submissions are anticipated to open in August. Next slide. If you would like to get involved in either the Cable Prize or the Microbattery Design Prize, please visit our pages on the American Made Challenge and the Hero X websites. Additionally, the Microbattery Design Prize, there will be two webinars. Uh, coming up in uh, May, hosted by the Entrepreneur Futures Network, and, uh, and in particular, one this coming Monday. So mark your calendars, May 1st, and then again on Monday, May 22nd, both at noon Eastern. Emily, can you drop the URLs for these? Again, happy Earth Week from Anto and the cable team. Take care. Thank you, Dina. All right, thank you so much. It's hard to believe, but we actually had one more office that wanted to join, but they are um, unfortunately away. They're at a, a peer review uh, meeting. So it's the building's office. Um, I just wanna uh, put a plug in for a couple of their prizes. Um, I know we're 10 minutes over, so I'm gonna go a little faster than I normally would have. But um, first, there's the building's upgrade prize that I want you all to know about. Um, very exciting. Applications are due on July 18th. And phase one, uh, the phase one award will be over $22 million in cash prizes and technical assistance to teams. That one is all about um, uh, basically uh, building uh, efficient electrification upgrade initiatives for existing buildings across the country. So if you're interest, interested in that, take a look at that opportunity. And then there's also the Easy Prize, which has been going on for a while. Um, and it's a, it's very focused on um, households, uh, multifamily homes, older homes, mobile homes, and homes in cold climates, where we uh, really need to try to figure out um, how to ensure that those, there's um, solutions for those homes to make sure that um, they are affordable up front and then also um, can be operated um, in an efficient manner over time. Um, and that one has six finalist teams that are um, recently chosen to advance to phase two. So we know that they are actively working on their ideas. So um, we're excited to see those ideas come to life. So really, I mean, it's incredible, actually, all, the, all that that was said today. Um, there are so many prizes. And hopefully what you can take away from this is that there is a lot of different kinds of prizes. There's technology prizes. There's community prizes. There's um, all kinds of prizes, different kinds of timing for the prizes, different dollar amounts for the prizes, and really so almost anything goes, but it's all supported from our network and our wonderful teams and our wonderful DOE colleagues. So thank you for everything that everybody in this room and online um, have done to get all of these prizes off the ground um, and really uh, make a real impact. Um, I just wanna say thank you for adding all of your unique voices, your ideas, your background, your roots to American Made, for anybody learning about this program for the very first time today, you heard Hero X. Um, Hero X is one of our um, sites that actually hosts a lot of the, the prizes. So you can go to AmericanMadeChallenges.org, and then many of our prizes will, will flow you over to Hero X so you can actually compete in the prize competitions. So um, yeah, if you consider yourself um, someone new to our, our, our group here, that'd be great. Become a new uh, connector, become a new competitor, um, or find another place that you can fit in and help our um, program grow and, and continue to succeed. And um, I know that um, the American Made, just know always that the American Made program is here to help you succeed, and it really is your fast track to the clean energy revolution. And remember, follow us on our blog, our newsletters, and our prize pages. Clearly, we have a lot of them. So find a technology that you're interested in and uh, start to follow a prize and participate. And that concludes our event. So thank you so much for everybody's time and attention today. Thank you for all the speakers that were online. Um, and it worked pretty smoothly for being virtual and in person. So thank you to the team that put this together, too. And happy Earth Day.